today, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about nth roots. Super small title, but very challenging concept. Okay, for any real numbers a and b, and any positive integer n, so n is our exponent, and I have numbers a and b, a is the nth root of b, meaning negative 3 to the 4th power is 81. So negative 3 is the 4th root of 81. And 3, the positive version, is going to be the principal root. So 6th root of 64. Basically what you're asking for is what to the 6th power gets me 64. Now this can be challenging. Break it down so that you have six of the same things that multiply to be 64. Really what you're solving for is you're solving for the sixth root of 64. So 64 we know is 8 times 8. Now break 8 down into more numbers. I know 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So since I have six of those, the sixth root of 64 is positive and negative 2. Because if I take negative 2 to the sixth power, I'm going to get a positive number out. The principal root would just be the positive version. But technically, positive and negative 2 are both of our possible answers. Now, the cube root of 216. What? to the third power is equal to negative 216. And notice how I'm doing these without a calculator. So keep that in mind. So this really means the cube root of 216. So I need negative 216. I know my answer is going to be negative. Because if I multiply a negative thing three times together, it's going to get me a negative back out. Now you have to break 216 down. I started by breaking 216 down into 2 times 108 because I didn't have a calculator. Now 108 I broke down into 6 times 18 because I know I'm looking for three of the same things that multiply. So it has to be a pretty big number. 18, 6 times 3. Notice what we have here. 6 times 6, 2 times 3 is also 6, so the cube root of negative 216, negative 6, because negative 6 times by another negative 6, I have 1, 2, and then 2 times 3 is also 6, times by another negative 6 is going to equal negative 216. Okay, simplifying each one of these. Square root. What you need to think about is you need to think about putting this piece under here to the second power. So how can I write that to the second power? Because the square root of x squared is going to get rid of those, and I'm just going to simplify to be x. So 16, what's this? How can I break that? That's 4 squared x to the fourth because you'd multiply 2 times 4. So the square root and the squared cancel each other out and we get 4x to the fourth. This next one, we need to write this as something squared. I have another quantity. I have q cubed plus 5. So how can I break down that 4 into a squared? Well, I know this power and the 2 would have to multiply to be a 4, so that's why that becomes a 2. So that's going to simplify because this square root and this squared essentially cancel. We're going to end up with negative q cubed plus 5 squared. Okay, now something that's a little bit more complicated. I now need to change all of these 
because we're looking at the fifth root as something to the fifth power. The variables are a little bit easier than the 243. I'll deal with that in a minute. But a to what power times 5 gets me a to the 10th. That's to the fifth power. B is to the third power, because when I multiply, I do, actually, I just noticed, I had a mistake there, should be A to the second power. You're not adding them, you're multiplying. So when I take this fifth power that's outside, and I multiply it to the squared, to the that would get me 10. Now, 243, I need to break down. Well, I know it's 2 doesn't go in, so I'm going to check if 3 goes in. And 3 goes in evenly because 2 plus 4 is 6 plus another 3 is 9. If you add the digits of a number together and that's a multiple of 3, then you know 3 goes in there. And 3 goes in there 81 times. So remember, I'm looking for 5 of the same thing that multiplied to be 243. 81 is 9 times 9. Well, 9 we know is 3 times 3. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to break down this number into the same number. And I've broken it down into the same number five times. So that's really 3 to the fifth is the same thing as 243. Now the fifth root and the fifth power underneath cancel each other out. So we get that. Square root of negative 4. Really, honestly, I don't know why they have this example in here, but it's a good review that, that you have to break that down into negative 1 times 4. The square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 4 is 2, so you end up with 2i. Notice how I don't have a plus and minus in there. That's only when we get to solving equations. Okay, simplifying with absolute value. And if you're really not paying attention to what I say... Um, you're going to really struggle with this and you're not going to get the right answers. So if you really fast forward or something like that and you don't pay attention, please slow down the video, pay attention to what I say here. Okay, simplifying this. This T can be positive. I can plug in a positive number and simplify. I can plug in a negative number and simplify. But my inherent answer is always going to be positive because of this sixth root. Because of this sixth root, my answer is always going to be positive. But my input for these t's is always can be positive or negative. So how do I make a positive or negative number always positive? That's going to simplify to the absolute value of t. Okay. My again, my input can be positive or negative. But because of that sixth root, that's always going to get me a positive number. So how do I get, if I were to plug in a negative number there, how do I simplify that to always being a positive number? Absolute value. Okay, B. Again, I want to write this as the fifth root of something. Luckily, we've already done some of this work. 243 is 3 to the fifth power. Now I need to write this x plus 2 to the 15th power as x x plus 2 to some power so that when I multiply this power times the 5, I get 15. So that's going to be 3. Now, absolute value signs. When I simplify this, the fifth root of 3 to the fifth is 3. The fifth root of this piece, the x squared plus 2, is just going to be x plus 2 to the third. Now, do I need absolute value signs? This is the challenging part. When I plug in, say, a negative number here, and I take it to the fifth power, I'm going to get a negative number. And when I take the fifth root, that's going to get me a negative number. 
So my answer is not always positive. So therefore, I have no need for absolute value signs. So if this root is even, you're going to need some absolute value signs in there. One last example. So again, I need to write this as a few things to the fourth power. So both things need to be to the fourth power so that my fourth root and my fourth power can cancel each other out. So 16 is 2 to the fourth. Now the x minus 3 x minus 3 to the third power then to the fourth power because when I multiply those two things together I'm gonna get 12. Okay so this simplifies to essentially what's inside the parentheses. But I took the fourth root. The fourth root always is positive. Inherently when I take that fourth root, it, the principal root is always positive. But I could plug in negative numbers here and simplify x minus 3 cubed, that, that could potentially be negative. But when I take the fourth root of it, that needs to be positive, so I need to add in my absolute value signs. Because when I take this thing up here to the 12th power, that's always going to be positive. But sometimes I'm going to get a negative number in there. Think about it. If I plug in negative 1, if we plug in negative 1 here, that's going to be a negative number. But when I take that negative number and I t take it to the 12th power, that's going to get me a positive number. So you need to add in the absolute value signs. Okay, there are your lesson questions. Simplify each of the following. And you have one of them. It's going to involve absolute value signs. So in your lesson questions, when you're giving me the answers, please make sure you write absolute value of whatever quantity you need, you want in your absolute value sign. And then remember, that button stands for an exponent. And please make sure that is submitted on time.